Dan Driver. And what we are doing is looking at a model for change. This is a model that I'm presenting you over a series of seven videos. Now, when we're wanting to help someone, this model is something we can have in our minds every time we meet with them and also throughout the time, throughout the process of when we're helping them. Now, what I do not mean by this is say someone comes to you for help and you listen to them and then you just tell them what to do. You give them a Bible verse about what to do. That's not what I mean. This is a model to help not just listen to the facts, but get to know them to understand what's really going on in their lives and then to be able to address the real issues behind everything so that they're seeing the Lord work in our lives on all levels. Now, as I said in the previous video, this model has seven key elements to help you do this. So this building relationship, the importance of really getting to know the person and building a good relationship with the person in front of you, gathering the facts, knowing what's going on in their lives, Proverbs 18 says, it's a fool who speaks before he's listened, and none of us want to be that kind of person. Really getting to know the person, ga gathering the facts, that you do that especially at the beginning of when you're getting to know them, but throughout the time, because new things will be being told to you, or you'll discover new things throughout, so that by having the right information, you're addressing the problems, and as isolating the problem, which is what we are going to be looking at now, then determining direction, rethinking the problem, assigning and evaluating tas tasks and giving hope. Now, what we want to do is look at isolating the problem. Now, what I want to present to you is a visual aid and a tool. But that's all it is. It's a visual aid and a tool. Now, I'm a logical person and I like things being in, in, in light like this. Other people have similar visual aids and they've got all sorts of arrows coming from them and hearts, but they're basically saying the same thing. So this is, again, a tool that I've used all, I use all the time in my own life, and I've seen the Lord use it and to help with hundreds of people as I've met with them. When someone comes to you for help, usually it's a level of their feelings, the presence level. They're feeling guilty. They're feeling angry. They're feeling depressed. They're feeling fearful, and it's impacting their life. So the presence level is what they felt on what they're feeling. And this, as I said, that's usually why they come to you for help. They're feeling sad. My relationship with so-and-so is not the way it should be. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling hurt. And this is where your help begins. You need to find out all sorts of information there. The next level then is performance level. It's what they've done. It's a level of behavior. And that's where um, that's things like, let's say, how they do their job, how they do housework, uh, what their spiritual life is like, what the church life is like, their friendships are like. Um, finances are like the use of free time, the use of time, social life, all sorts of all areas of your life is affected by that. Then there's the preconditioning level, and that's to do with your upbringing or the group that you've belonged to. It's things that you take as a given because of the way that you were raised. Now, I'm from Scotland, and I lived in Scotland for the first two decades of my life, more or less. That means that the values and the ways of thinking that I grew up with Scottish, especially west of Scotland. But I've been living in Belgium, in Flemish-speaking Belgium, for a number of decades now. And that's got a whole other way of looking at life and values. So because I live in a different culture, I can see things in Scotland that are Scottish, and then in Belgium I see things that are Belgium and not necessarily coming from Scripture. But we all have that. We have ways from our own countries, our own families, that we take on as truths about the way that we should do things without actually thinking it through even just at a level of upbringing how do you speak to people how do you resolve conflict how do you express yourself these are things that we absorb we learn from the people around us so this could, could include our families our upbringing the schools we go to the kind of people the, the groups of people that we've spent a lot of time with and then perceptual that's what other a lot, other people call the heart so it's about the desires, the thoughts, the motives, the will. So this is your way of going through life. Um, it's a way of thinking. It's a way of desiring what you're wanting. So let's take an example. Say someone's coming to you and they're angry. and Or bitter would be even better example. Someone's bitter. And they come to you and they, they're complaining about life. And they, they say, uh, I'm sad. I'm lonely. I'm 
they might very few people would say they're bitter. Well, how do you find out what's going on? You want to find out what's going on in our life. You want to get information from them. So what you do is looking at, you got, what you want to do is to ask questions. You want to ask them uh, what they're thinking. So what I usually do is I get people to write down when they're upset about something, what they were thinking, and also how they feed that thought. So I would be where they were, who it was about, and what they were doing. And that shows you how they're feeding the thought. So let's say that someone is, as I say, someone is a bitter person, an angry person. That bitterness will not just be in, a, in, in itself. It will affect all areas of their life. If someone goes through life thinking bitter thoughts, they become a bitter person. It affects their inner being. And that will then be expressed in how they go through life, how they speak. It will affect their relationships, how they relate to people. So they might be expecting to be hurt or they might be resentful or suspicious or paranoid or gossipy. Uh, they might just not relate to people at all. And the preconditioning could be perhaps the way they were raised, as a, like maybe they were told not to trust people. Maybe they had a bitter parent. Maybe they weren't taught how to resolve conflict. And then the perceptual is how they then go through life. So as I say, I ask people to, to write down who, what, where, and then find out who was it about, what were they doing, and where they were. And a lot of the time, people feed these thoughts when they're doing something that does not involve concentration. So that could be cooking, cleaning, ironing, driving cars. And you find out what it is, where it is they're feeding the thought, who it was about, and what they were doing. And by getting that information, you can find out what kinds of thoughts they have, but also how the thought progresses. So as an example, that could go from someone sends a text message to someone and someone does not answer when they expected it to. And then they can see, see that person doesn't want me. That person ignores me after all I've done for them. And then they start thinking about all the other people that they've invested in and uh, ignore them and don't want anything to do with them. And then, or, or even don't uh, show respect or appreciation. And then they start thinking about all these other people. And that then affects how they do their da daily tasks. It affects how they speak to other people. And that become, person becomes irritated and annoyed. So the next time they see that person or have to communicate with that person, what's that going to look like? And the person might not even know what's going on in that person's heart. Perhaps maybe they uh, were busy, they were doing something else. Or they might have seen it and forgotten about it. There could be an innocent explanation. But as you're meeting with that person, finding out what they're thinking, how they're feeding it, and then also working those things, working those thoughts, think what is true, what's helpful, what's scriptural. And at the same time, also, also go a step deeper. Think, well, what, what's the desire behind that? I'm desiring love. I'm desiring respect. I'm desiring to be heard. I'm desiring to be seen. And while these desires are good things, they're actually controlling a person's life. And, it's, and as they have that desire under the Lordship of Christ, when that desire doesn't get met, then they can know the Lord's help in dealing with that disappointment rather than going down this road to bitterness and anger and frustration. So what you can do then is you're working in all three, on the three levels or four levels you, um, as you're working with them because you're then taking what they're thinking and that could be in a moment, but that could also be as a result of their upbringing how that's expressed in their daily life through the way they speak, the way they relate, how they do their job. And you'll notice that this will have an effect on their presence as well. Now talk about preconditioning, and, I, and I'm using the example of bitterness here. And in the previous video, I talked about the importance of get, gathering facts. Imagine this person that you're talking to is coming for help with anger and you're seeing this bitterness Perhaps they were treated badly when they were raised. Imagine they've been abused or neglected as a child. And this is a way that they've learned to cope. This is a way that they've learned to protect themselves. And that's why it's so important to get all the information and to help the person in the stage that they're at and in the process of where they're at to be able to get help to be living according to who they are in Christ. So this is key element three, isolating the problem.